that they were needed in the fight against Al-Qaeda. But from day one, over 90% of their training and operations focus on demonizing, surveilling, and harassing anyone who stands against their takeover. The Department of Homeland Security calling on firefighters to take on a new role in the war on terror. The idea to be the eyes for the U.S. government when they're inside a home. Now, unlike police officers, firefighters don't need a warrant to go into private houses. And critics say that's where things get sticky. Cable company repairmen, truck drivers, maid services, and hundreds of other professions that go inside homes and businesses without warrants are now on the government's payroll as citizen snitch spies. But Big Brother doesn't stop there. Children are being indoctrinated inside the public schools nationwide to spy on their parents. You can give information without having to give your name. You guys can get paid for good tips up to $200. The New York Times praised public school programs in the United States and England that are training children to report their parents for eco-crimes like taking a hot bath or letting the water run while you brush your teeth. All of that violates their carbon footprint credit allotment. Check it out, check it out. And that's where we come in. We're the carbon cops and we're on the lookout for energy wasters. Our job is to get all Australian households to cut their carbon emissions. So Carbon Cops is a program that looked at energy use in a domestic sense. We went into people's houses and got them to reduce their energy use by 50%. Sadly, the Boy Scouts of America have now contracted with the Department of Homeland Security and are now training more than 20,000 Boy Scouts in anti-terror urban warfare mount training. The federal grants are very specific. The Scouts are trained to carry out seek and destroy missions against disgruntled veterans of the U.S. Armed Forces. Good evening, everyone. Homeland Security is enlisting some unlikely new recruits to fight terrorism and help with other emergencies. The Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts across the country and here in East Tennessee are now taking part. Nine-year-old Elise Murphy has already earned a lot of Girl Scout patches. And now, every member of the 3.4 million Girl Scouts of America is now being trained by the Federal Emergency Management Agency to aid and support Homeland Security in disaster and anti-terror operations. One of the things that if you talk to our generals, they are desperate for is a civilian uh, counterpart to our military forces. Everybody somewhere between the ages of 18 and 25 will serve three months of basic training and understanding in a kind of civil defense. So is this compulsory then? It, well, you have to, uh, in a sense, it's, it's a required of everybody, 18 to 25, three months, uh, and at some point at that point you do it. Creating citizen armies in, in one way is, you know, it's, it's disgusting <laughs> because what you do is you get young kids and you can mold their minds easily and we saw them chanting and crying and they'll follow any leader whether it's in a, a black shirt, a brown shirt, a red shirt, whatever the shirt might be. Another branch of Homeland Security the Corporation for National and Community Service is setting up literally hundreds of other private uniformed youth groups. The White House has introduced legislation to establish forced national service for all Americans between the ages of 16 and 64. In 2008, the North American military governorship, known as NORTHCOM, announced that they had deployed 4,000 regular Army troops inside the United States to deal with civil unrest because they knew that their offshore masters were about to rob the United States blind. In 2009, the Pentagon requested funding from Congress to deploy 379,000 military personnel in thousands of communities across the United States. And now, legislation has been introduced in Congress to expand a system of FEMA concentration camps across the United States under the National Emergency Centers Act, H.R. 645. The Republic is hanging by a thread. The last vestiges of our free system of government are being swept away. You know, you got time to watch baseball, you got time to watch football, you got time to entertain yourself, but I think a knowledgeable public we're losing 
And we've got to get people back on track to paying attention because if you don't take pay attention to your government and what they're doing, you're going to pay some dire consequences for it. Unless we become active and become influential in the power centers of society, there's nothing we can do about it. Just knowing about it is not enough. And as long as we are given at election time an option between the Republican candidate or the Democrat, a Democrat candidate, both of whom have been selected by members of the Council on Foreign Relations and both of whom have the same general policies, that's not going to change anything either. So the real issue is, so what? And the answer is we've got to recapture control of the power centers of society. The people have a decision to make. Our nation has been seized in the jaws of a global corporate takeover. The republic is passing into history. We're losing our freedoms. And it's up to every man, woman, and child in the United States to decide whether we're going to be fooled by the slick propaganda of the social engineers or whether we're going to restore the republic. The values expressed by our founding fathers and the Declaration of Independence and other documents are very important to these times, and it's now our chance to manifest those documents. Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country, because the country is being stolen from us in broad daylight, not only stolen metaphorically, but financially as well. The numbers don't lie. The American people, having been educated as to the truth, then have to rise up and demand and get a government that starts serving them. We need a change, and it isn't going to come from Democrats and Republicans. It has to come from the American people. Dissension is the greatest form of patriotism, and I believe that. Because if you don't hold your elected officials' feet to the fire and pay attention, you are going to get bad government. So it's imperative for all of us. It's our, it's our job as citizens of this great country to pay attention. This is our last chance to not relive history. Hundreds of nations have fallen to tyranny in the last century alone. America is a prize coveted by the despotic mega corporations that now dominate our planet. If their world government is truly to rise, freedom and the republic for which it stands must fall. Now is the time for all good men and women to come to the aid of their country. One of the greatest events in history is taking place before our very eyes. For many generations into the future, our progeny will look back on this time as either a place where humanity rose to the challenge and made a stand against the forces of darkness, or as a time when the planet fell into the grip of a merciless high-tech tyranny. Part 2, The Fall of the Republic. You will learn the elite's master plan for humanity. But more importantly, you will learn how to stop that plan, reverse the criminal tide, and reignite the flame of liberty on the long march to man's ultimate destiny.